been a long time since I filmed a video. I don't really have the energy today, so I am sorry if it's kind of lackluster. But I wanted to give y'all a cooking video since y'all said you were interested. So today I'm going to be making my cheeseburger soup. So I'm starting out with two pounds of ground beef, just whatever's on sale. And I'm going to brown that up in this pan. And since I'm making it low carb, I don't do keto, but I do low carb. Instead of potatoes, I'm using radishes, which I have not tried before, but seems like it will work. So I am going to boil those up. Normally I would boil my potatoes in the soup, but I don't want the radishes to make the soup purple and yucky looking because aesthetically I feel like that would be too much. While our beef and radishes are cooking, I'm going to chop up some pickles for our topping. And we love all the pickles in our cheeseburger soup. So I've got a fresh jar of pickle spears to cut up, just you know, regular old dill pickle spears. These radishes are not boiling up. That's okay, they don't go in until the end. My beef is almost browned up. Let's chop up some pickles. You can make these pickle chunks as big or small as you want. But I do find that it's best to use pickles that you actually cut up rather than relish. And I don't normally write down my recipes or measure things, so I really sat down and racked my brain this afternoon to figure out measurements to the best of my ability. So I may have to adjust things as we're cooking, but I think I've got everything measured out right. probably been since last winter that I made this. It's still not cold here and I'm kind of sad about it. I don't like the little yucky tops of pickles. I keep a trash bowl over here. Uh, but yeah, it's still hot here and I'm not enjoying it. It should definitely be fall by now. <laughs> Normally we get snow in October and it's still 80 degrees and it's unpleasant. <laughs> We got a nice taste of fall, like a solid week of like 60s and 70s, and it was lovely, although it did rain the whole time, which was not lovely, but the weather temperature felt nice in the house. So hopefully next week we can get back to some much more pleasant weather. I was not kidding about all these pickles, y'all. We love our pickles on top. And I will probably use this whole jar. <laughs> I'm not going to cut all of them up right now. But there's a very good chance I'm going to have to cut up the rest of them once everybody starts dishing up their plates. Plates. Bowls. <laughs> Wouldn't want to put soup on a plate. Maybe a bowl, as my husband says. There's like deep thrusters. We're down to like two of those though. Because for some reason they always get broken. Alright, we're going to call it a fat with the pickles. But I'm going to leave them over here because I know I'm probably going to have to chop up more. But for now I'm just going to set these over on the island. And wash all that pickle juice off my hands. is picking up nicely. It has a lot to say. And I don't mash this, just kind of chop it up a bit so that it cooks a little quicker. But you don't want tiny little pieces in your soup. It's better when you got some bigger chunks. 
a little bit longer on that one. There's still a little bit of paint. Oops, no, it's not there anymore. Radishes are starting to boil, so that's a good sign. Once this meat is ground up, we're just going to put it into a bowl and stick it in the fridge, and not in the fridge, in the microwave, and then we'll cook up our other ingredients in the grease. It may or may not all fit in this bowl. We shall see. That's cooked enough for me. I'm going to turn the heat down so that when we put our onions and garlic in there, it does not burn. I'm going to use a holy spoon. I don't know what you technically call this. Like, I don't know, a fry scooper. I'm just going to use that to get the meat out so that I can leave behind the grease. Of course, the amount of grease left behind is going to vary depending on which type of meat you buy. I just get whatever's on sale. Nope, that bowl is not going to get it. Maybe if I smash it down enough it will. I'm so used to touching hot foods that my hands are almost immune to it. I can't eat hot food though. Like temperature hot. Not a lava mouth, just lava hands. Alright. Making extra messes for myself as usual. All right, so let's just put this in here so it stays warm and the cats don't steal it. So we've turned our temperature down on our pot with our grease. That's about how much I left in here. There's a little bit of hamburger meat left in there. It's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. So to this, we are going to add two tablespoons of butter. And I know you're like, you got all that grease. Why are you putting butter in it? Because it tastes good. Yeah, we can just move the spoon over here. Put that in the sink. I don't need that again. Just gonna let our butter melt away in here. While that's working, we're gonna add one whole onion. Diced if you can, chopped up in little pieces is acceptable. Does not need to be perfect. Rustic is fine by me. Oh, our radishes are boiling. Get that lid off before it overflows. I have no idea how long those days to cook, so we shall see. The water's already purple. <laughs> um, in addition to our one onion, we are going to add in two teaspoons of minced garlic, which is equal to about two cloves. Of course, my kids have stolen all of my teaspoon measures. Probably for the drink mixes. I only have half a teaspoon, so we'll just have to put four of these in. This is my attempt at measuring y'all. I hope you appreciate the effort. Because <laughs> normally I would just squeeze it in there and say, yep, that's good. So we're going to cook this fairly low so that it just kind of softens without burning because I have the ADHD real bad and I tend to wander off while I'm cooking and burn things. So if we use a low temperature, that is less likely to happen. We're just going to let these cook until they soften. And once we get to that point, we'll catch back up. In about 10 minutes, our onions have softened up nicely. They're not translucent, but they are soft, so they'll have a bit sweeter taste. 
radishes are still boiling away. I did sample one. It's not spicy anymore, but it still has too much of a crunch to replace the potato. So I'm going to let them cook a little bit longer. To our onions, we are going to add back our ground beef. Ooh, that bowl is hot. Get that a good stir together. I'm going to pull out a little bit of our broth here. This is just six cups of low sodium beef broth. Whichever kind you like is fine. I'm going to pull out two tablespoons of room temperature broth. I'm going to add to two tablespoons of cornstarch. Hopefully this is enough to thicken our soup in addition to the cheese. If not, we'll just have to add more later. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but I'm just using a chopstick to get it all a good stir together. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and put our broth in. And I always fill the broth when I pour it in, even though there's spout, so I just put the whole thing in the pot and pour it this way. There we go. No mess. I'll just stir that together, bump up the temperature again, and we will stir in our cornstarch spray. Again, low carb, not keto. <laughs> I know keto people don't like to use the cornstarch, but it's better than using like a fourth of a cup of flour when I can just use some cornstarch. Lower carbs. All right, so this is almost done. We're going to let it come back up to a boil. Once those radishes are cooked to my liking, they will go in the pot as well. And then we will finish it off with some cheese. So I will check back in when we're closer to that happening. Our radishes are finally cooked to my liking. So I'm going to strain those and add them to our soup. See if y'all can see the purple water from over there. I'm sure it tastes fine, but I didn't want my soup to be purple and make it extra muddy looking. Did not seem appetizing. Go. I got it up to a boil with the lid on and now I'm just going to take it off and let it boil away. It will thicken as it cooks. Probably get another 10-15 minutes with the radishes in so they can maybe absorb some of the flavor. Not sure how potato-y they will behave in this situation. But we'll let it keep cooking. Alright, let's turn this down a little bit because it's getting extra wild here. It has not quite thickened up to my liking, but I think when we add the cheese, it'll thicken up a bit more. So we're just going to turn that off. And then I'm going to leave it on this burner and just kind of let it come down in temperature a little bit. Let it keep cooking, but once it gets to not a crazy bubbling pot over here, we will add the cheese in. If we add the cheese in now, it's just going to like disintegrate into nothing and it's not going to thicken our soup. So we need to let it just hang out for a little bit. We've just got basically a simmering pot now. I'm going to put in our one and a half cups of cheese. Some of it got stuck and we do not want to waste our cheese.
So we're gonna stir that in. Still didn't thicken quite as much as I would have liked. I'm guessing the starch from the potatoes probably added to that before. But I'm not going to worry about adding any more thickener. It's a good chunky stoop, as Rachel Ray would say. And I just don't want to fiddle with it anymore. Let's see if we can serve up a bowl so y'all can see. There we go. That's what she looks like. Guys, you're making excessive noise for no reason. Let's get some pickles on top of there. This is how we eat it. Isn't it delightful? I think it's going to be absolutely delicious, but it's too hot for me to eat. So I'm going to let my husband come get his bowl because... He's been stalking this kitchen, waiting for his cheeseburger soup. Right, let's go see what he thinks. All right, he approved of the radishes in place of potatoes, so yay. Here we go. Now I'm going to fix myself a bowl of cheeseburger soup and go sit down and eat. <laughs> 